everybody. Welcome back. Another episode of Exiles TV on this Thursday morning, the 5th of November. Gosh, indeed. Were there, are there any 5th of November songs? No. Earth, Wind, and Fire kind of let us down. They could have done one. Um, I'm just glad they did the one. It's one of my favorite songs ever. And I th maybe that's because the, if you, what's, what's, the, what's the date and very first line of the song? You Do you remember the 21st, 21st of, September, of September? Yes. Which is the name of the song, September. But yeah. that's my wife's birthday, the 21st ah. of September. So, but I, I love that song. I love that song. If they just played that opening, if they played that opening horn ride for three minutes, I would love the song. I love Earth, Wind, and Fire. Oh. How can you not love Earth, Wind, and Fire? Are you a communist? I mean, if you don't love Earth, Wind, and Fire now. They, they did some stuff that was a little avant-garde that a lot of people didn't get. But they were always like very good musicians. Like version Get You Into My Life? Yeah. I, I like that one, Great, though. great song. Again, great horn. See, I like a remake when the artist takes the song and makes it their own. Yeah, they do something completely different. Exactly. Um, boom, boom, boom. We have a lot of news uh, in our area that is unrelated to the election. It has to do with more and more Let's and more gunplay. Let's let's take a minute and decompress from the election. Let's take let's take an hour and decompress from the election. Well, yeah. Anyway. Let's let's talk about something that continues. Again, we have a, ma a mayoral election going on, and we have heard from every candidate about the economy and roads and streets and drainage, and then they slip in police raise, which I agree with. But they're not talking about any kind of con concrete plan to actually tamp down crime yep and our gun crime we are going to set a record for homicides this year and for non-fatal gun crime mm -hmm. and we're starting to see this stupid stuff like this one from yesterday a toddler accidentally shot himself while left alone with a firearm uh, I'm sorry 26 year old man has been arrested um, he left a three-year-old alone with a gun, and the three-year-old accidentally shot himself. The man is identified as Jacoby Joseph, and he forgot that one of his friends had left an assault-style weapon in his vehicle, which was parked in the home's driveway. Okay, so we, we're not even talking about some little tuck it in your pants uh, the waist of your pants. Yeah, you might have forgot that Saturday you set it, on the, set it on the coffee table. Yeah, this is a long gun. And, uh, this is a long gun, a semi-automatic weapon. Mm-hmm. Good lord, what three-year-old kid is not going to want to play with that? Army man. Oh yeah. Uh, Joseph said he uh, did not recall that a dangerous firearm was on the floor of his vehicle. Who, who rides around with? A semi-automatic rifle in the, on the floorboard of the in back In the passenger seat. compartment. Yeah. Yeah, it kind of makes me wonder why his friend had that and, on the, and left it on the floorboard of the car. Yeah. Uh, he left the kid alone in the car, he says, briefly. And he heard a gunshot, went back to the vehicle, found a three-year-old injured. Uh, kid apparently shot himself in the leg with the weapon, by the way. So this Lucky he still a, has a leg. Yeah, he still has a leg, and uh, he will apparently recover. But uh, but see, I want to know... A three-year-old kid, that, I mean, I can do a lot of damage to a little three-year-old leg. But again, what I want to know at this point is the friend's name and whether the friend had purchased that weapon legally mm -hmm. or if that weapon is on a hot sheet or if the police now are going to fire that weapon and see if it matches anything that oh, was ever I, used in a crime. You, you, you don't think they will? You bet they will. The, the, what they have to do is, you, you like your triage, you deal with the most immediate crime first, the child endangerment. Yeah. Then you can work your way back and find out if the weapon's even legal or has, have you said, has it been used in commission of a crime? And uh, by the way, whose weapon is this? But here's the whole thing. Our cops are under fire a lot. They've got people that want to commit crimes and they don't want cops to stop them or arrest them. We've got people who are afraid of crime that want our cops to be more proactive. And again, my opinion is this happened yesterday afternoon. They should be telling us more than just the child was treated and he was arrested and what he was charged with. 
they should say we are working to locate the owner of the firearm. We are, but, you know, they should say that it, it would inspire a little more confidence. I know, Bill, think? but look, you, you and I, we have friends on BRPD. You understand there's things they don't tell the media. Yeah, well, this is the Sheriff's Department, by the way. Well, but, but, uh, law enforcement, yeah. there's things they don't tell the media because they don't want the people they're investigating to know that they're, that they're currently under investigation. Mm -hmm. I, I guarantee you they will get to the bottom of that weapon. Well, will they let us know when they do? Uh, yeah, I think the Sheriff's Office will. Because you know what? I haven't seen that in a lot of these. I haven't seen that the well, weapon was legally owned by or the weapon was reported stolen well, there's, by. There, you know, I mean, it would be nice to see like follow-ups, updates attached to this particular story. But, you know, whether, whether the update is the kid's out of the hospital or the update of you know, the uncle or whatever it is, the, the uncle's buddy's been arrested, mm -hmm. let's, let's follow that trail. But I'm getting really but I think tired the, of I this. I think reporters just take whatever they're spoon-fed by the law enforcement and just regurgitate it well, and, and that's I, the end of it. I, I don't... I don't think that a lot of these youngsters that are right out of school that they send right out have been instructed on what is a good substantive follow-up question. Mm. Because you can always ask, well, are you going to let us know when you've run this weapon if it's legally purchased and who it belongs to? These I mean, are all you can ask questions. that question. And that can be in your story. Let's see, as you know, if it bleeds, it leads. Toddler shot is a good story. Toddler recovers, not so great. You know, six weeks from now, man arrested for, you know, in case of gunshot, you know, of non fatal gunshot to toddler. Ho hum. Well, and I've got another, uh, I got another story where the uh, it's an important story, and where the reporting is incomplete, I want to get to, uh, and this one's going to aggravate you a little bit. Well, hold on to it for a minute, because yeah. we're going to do business. Mm -hmm. Time for a quick break. Take care of that business, and we'll be right back. Hope you'll be with us for Exiles TV. Bobby Yarborough with Manda Fine Meats. Here at Manda, we know what the folks of South Louisiana love. They love great flavored smoked sausage, delicious deli meats, and specialty items like boudin and andouille sausage. Manda Fine Meats has been providing these products since 1947. We produce them right here in Baton Rouge, so you know you're always getting the freshest product at your local grocery store. Manda Fine Meats. Taste the fresh local flavor in everything we make. Make it Manda every time. Back, Exiles TV. Glad to have you with us here. Uh, you had left off saying that the question that needs to be asked is what? Well, the question that needs to be asked is, is, is about some of this reporting 
and, and what they don't say. Uh, the headline on this is that the Metro Council did not pass, once again, their second bite at the apple, the $5 million settlement for the Sterling family. Um, and, you know, this says uh, they failed to pass the $5 million settlement. They've got the vote. It was 6-5, six, 6 in favor, 5 against. So it did not, it did not pass. You need seven to pass. Um, it was, uh, there was a motion by Metro Councilwoman Jennifer Rocca to delay the vote until a later date, but that failed. But in the reporting of the story, I mean, this thing, they only had the vote last night, once again, because they didn't have a couple of the emailed in public comments right. a month and a half ago. Right. So this was a limited do-over. So it was highly unlikely that anybody was going to change their position. But they went through the whole dog and pony show again. Sure, because they love to waste time at the Metro Council. Good at it. Very good at it. Uh, but here is, here is something that bothers me. The story quotes, all right, this is a direct quote. Not only is he, Sterling, an innocent victim, but so are his children. I think a $5 million settlement for the loss of their father is just. End of quote. And then it says, said a professor brought in to speak by Shauna Banks. Professor who? Well, that's the whole thing. The story does not name him. And I know he had to read his name into the record before he could speak. It didn't say what he is a professor of or where he is a professor. I mean, he could be a professor of Cajun music at Delgado Community College. And so why are you writing this story and quoting him and not telling those who watch it on the TV or read it on your website what this guy is a professor of and where he is such a professor? I think that's relevant, don't you? I do, I, I do, Bill, and I agree with you. Here's the thing about television reporting. I understand that sometimes you're given a constraint by the news director or the editor or whatever you want to call them, the floor director. When you get back with your story and you and the photog are going to edit the video and put it all together, they tell you, you got 3 minutes 17. Or you got 2 minutes 53. Or whatever. And what you present on television, you may have to excise some of that. I think where they make mistakes is sometimes what you see on these web pages is just a transcript of what was said on television. Mm -hmm. And the reporter could be proactive and get in the web publishing tool and write a more thorough version of his own story. Well, but even but if, do they get paid any extra if they're more thorough? Even if they are time constrained, okay? This is an expert brought in by a member of the council. They, they could kill the quote from the person who said, people make mistakes, Alton Sterling made one, Blaine Salon made, made one, but we shouldn't be held responsible for $5 million, okay? That was just a citizen that came to speak. If you're presenting an expert, if you've made it well known as a council member that you're bringing this expert to speak, that is in the record, and that should be in the story. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's, because I, I let me agree. tell you what. I want to know this guy was trying to influence the Metro Council to spend $5 million of my money and your money and his money and his money. And I want to know what he is a professor of. I want to know where he is a professor. And I want to know his name. Because... If he is at LSU or Southern or ULL, he's getting paid with taxpayer money too. I just want to say one thing to the, to the family of Alton Sterling and to all the people who mourn the loss of Alton Sterling, that Alton didn't need to die that night all those years ago. He, he, didn't, he didn't need to die. He made, now I understand from the pharmacology, he was probably... Uh, in an impaired state of decision making but his decisions are what led to everything that happened that night it was uh, his decision let's not forget the police were called because a man with a weapon who matched the description of Alton Sterling uh, was apparently threatening people in the parking lot of the triple S grocery 
Police arrive, there he is, he answers the description. Um, they want to do the simple thing of let's empty his pockets. And from that point, because he's got a gun in his pocket, and we found that out, that was on the video, uh, he didn't want to let police empty his pockets, he, he, and, he, and the, the resistance began, and it led to a fatal conclusion. Uh, I am not completely defending Officer Salamone's tactics that night, but two investigations cleared he or Officer Lake of any wrongdoing, both of violating civil rights or of committing a crime under the Louisiana state statute. So to say Alton is an innocent victim is not, it, it's not accurate. All I'm more, sorry he's gone, but he precipitated his own death. Well, all the more reason that he should be identified in your news story. The person says he's an innocent victim. Um, There's some people that might disagree with that. A lot of people screw up and wind up getting shot by the cops. They make bad, bad decisions. I don't know what's going through your head, but you know, when you're encountering the police, the best thing to do, whether you think it's right that cops have this power over you or not, is comply with what they're asking you to do. Oh, by the way, uh, I found the other night, I have the complete report from the Attorney General's office of the investigation into the death of Alton Sterling. Mm -hmm. And I just decided to read it Sunday night. And what I either didn't know or didn't remember, and many people didn't know, is the person who called 911, not once but twice, came forward to be identified and he was there when the cops rolled in to point out Alton Sterling as the man That's the guy. who brandished a gun. So it wasn't just he matched the description, he was actually fingered. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. I didn't know that or I've forgotten it. But you know, I, I don't like the Metro Council and I understand that in some of these cases they're going to save a lot of money uh, if they settle it, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I think you pay your money, you take your chances. When you're on the council and somebody is suing in a serious matter or a not serious matter, your obligation is to sit there and say, let it go through the system. If we win, we win. If we lose, we lose. I do not, because there are members of that council that are trying to give a great big Christmas gift to the surviving family of Alton Sterling. I mean, there's no two ways about it. That is what is happening if, here. If, if they agreed to the payout, it would have been a million bucks a year for five years. That's a nice, fat injection of money into that family but for five years. But they're suing. At taxpayer expense. They're suing for wrongful death. And the first thing that happens in a wrongful death suit. They compute the worth of the, of the person who passed. They compute the amount of financial ability the person who is wrongfully dead would generate, Anybody? which means they would get close to nothing even if they prevail. Yeah, does anybody have any idea what the bootleg CD business uh, will pull you down in a year? We didn't file any tax returns. <laughs> Clarence Bug says about five million. Well, and, and, and let's not forget, <laughs> All right. <laughs> there is a cap oh, on suing awful. municipalities of a million. And when the council was informed of that by their attorneys, they should have said, well, that ends it. But defense attorneys are telling them that, you know, well, we might get more if we go to court. We can get around that cap. Well, no, you can't, and no, you won't. So what you've got is you... They hope they'd get the, councils, the council to blink. Yeah, but you've got members of the council they're even quoting how much is in the emergency payout fund that we keep because we're self-insured and they're trying to give a big fat gift to these people at our expense and I disagree with it. I, it, I think that every damn suit even if it's a slip and fall on the courthouse steps should go to court. There should be no settlements, period. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll wait and see. Now here's the way it, it falls. Now that means it's pretty much dead for this particular uh, effort to get money for the, the, the Sterling family. But with a January trial date set, late January, mm -hmm. the new council, if they want, a brand one of the brand new six council members that's going to be sworn in in January could ask to bring this up again before that trial date. And if I were a seated member of the council that is returning, 
I would say. Or Ms. Ms. Banks, who is returning, could bring it up again. Uh, I would say. Councilwoman Banks. I would say. No, it's been heard. You can't. You can't keep bringing it back. You're once, twice, three times a lady. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. This is this is in the whole thing has been improper to even entertain a five million dollar settlement. In this case, is grossly improper. It is what it is. Listen, time for another uh, quick break. We're going to take care of that when we come back. Those great New Orleans traditions going by the wayside. Are you ready to pop the top on a nice cold? Foberg beer. Huh? Coming up on Exiles TV. We'll be right back. Live and play on the fairway at Greystone Golf and Country Club, a serene, challenging golf destination located in Denham Springs. For tee times and membership opportunities, go to greystonecountryclub.com. From appetizers, pasta dishes, and entrees, La Cantea takes pride in preparing all the Italian cuisine we know you love. Enjoy live music every Thursday through Saturday from 6 to 9, happy hour weekdays from 3 to 6, and brunch on Sundays from 11 to 2, as well as dinner portion-sized lunch specials for under $10. Visit our website to view our menu and book a party or meeting in our large banquet room. Once you try La Cantea, your Italian dining will change forever. the feeling surprise something good has finally happened in 2020 yours truly the clarence bug show gets to be with you every day of the week that's right 11 to 12 every weekday and of course the exiles right in front of yours truly from 10 to 11 yours truly 11 to 12 so now it's appointment viewing five days a week here on the Pelican, the Clarence Bug Show. The only thing missing is you. Hi, I am Dr. Farrell Frugge, Jr., and I am a general dentist at Frugge Family Dentistry. I was born and raised in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I went to Catholic High School, LSU, and LSU School of Dentistry in New Orleans, where I received my DDS degree in 1986. I always have and will continue to be committed to continuing my education, to invest in technology, which makes the diagnosis and delivery of dentistry more thorough, more comfortable, and more aesthetically pleasing. In our practice, we are here to serve the patients. We want to improve their quality of life and to develop relationships with our patients. In dentistry, we have a chance to impact lives on a daily basis, not just by doing dentistry, but by getting to know them and being a part of their life. We also believe in giving back to our community. So every year, we give back to the Greater Baton Rouge Food Bank, Toys for Tots, and Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center. Please stop by and visit our office. We would love to take care of you and your family. You could be driving. Right now, during the Team Honda Upgrade event, get a new 20 Accord Sport for just $309 a month with no money down, no first payment, and no security deposit. It's time to upgrade to your new Honda at Louisiana's number one new car dealer, Team Honda, on Segan Lane. Welcome back to Exiles TV, Bill Perfita over there, and I'm Kevin Gallagher, and uh, so glad to have you with us. Well, you remember early in the year, at the beginning of the COVID crisis, and then we had the George Floyd incident, we had this big wave of social justice desire and protest going the on. The cancel culture. And cancel culture kicked in, and uh, anything that could even be remotely construed as racist uh, had, had to go. Uh, and one of the things that went by the wayside, voluntarily, Gail Benson, the majority owner of Dixie Beer, decided the name Dixie has to go. The Dixie Chicks musical act decided to name themselves The Chicks. Which is so funny because you know the origin of Dixie, right? It has nothing to do with skin color, race, race relations, it's a $10 bill. slavery. <laughs> it's a $10 bill. 
The origin of Dix, the, 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 the $10 bill in New Orleans was a dix, D-I-X. It's the French word for 10. Yes. And the city became known as Dixie, euphemistically. Mm -hmm. The city. Somewhere along the line, Dixie became this all-encompassing word for the South. Yeah, from Song of the South. The and Stephen Collins, Dixie, yeah. Stephen Collins Foster, I think, helped mm -hmm. make people believe that Dixie meant the South. Dixie specifically, the city of New Orleans, the $10 bill. And I'm going to argue to you that, you know, not everything in American Southern culture relates to racism. So to change the name of the Dixie Chicks or Dixie Beer because you're afraid someone might get upset about it. And did anybody come forward and demand this? Not that I'm aware of. I, I think somebody did ask them to consider that their name may be hurtful to people. I always like that part. It might be hurtful. Might to be people. hurtful. Might be. It, it's like, you know what? It, people, are, people have forgotten how to be rich in this country, particularly in the South. If I were Gail Benson, I would have said, Come take your best shot. We'll go, so, best. we'll go bare knuckles. For decades and decades, one of the things that people have asked for when they came to visit the city of New Orleans, the Crescent City, was they wanted one of those Dixie long necks. Mm -hmm. I remember Dixie beer went away for a little while, and yeah. then it came back. The Benson's it bought it. The joyous it return. Yeah. The Benson's brought back Dixie beer, uh, and Tom wanted to restore it to its former glory, and it got to where the name... You know, Dixie Beer had a mystique, and the Dixie Brewery, which no longer a brewery, it's a shopping center, shopping mm -hmm. attraction, but the old Dixie Brewery right there on the riverfront uh, at, at uh, Armstrong, not, not Armstrong Park, uh, anyway, the, uh, the, the park right there on the riverfront in New Orleans. I'm going all Joe Biden on you now, Bill. The city park? You know, the thing. The thing, yeah, that thing. <laughs> I, I know the building. Uh, it, it has been repurposed. But, um, yeah. Jackson Square, Jackson please. Square. Um, please forgive me for the neuron misfire. Mm -hmm. So now, ladies and gentlemen, when your friends come to New Orleans, if they want to drink some New Orleans tradition and they're not in the mood for a Sazerac, you can take and get them uh, an ice cold Faubourg. So is Jack's Brewery still in, in business? Yes, they are. Because as I guess, far as, I, as far as I know. Well, that's uh, that's a short that's a shortening that's a nickname for and Jack's maybe, Andrew Jackson. Yeah. But, oh, then we're going to have to cancel that. What about Falstaff? Wasn't Falstaff a Shakespearean character that owned slaves? He was a, a lord over the serfs? Sir John Falstaff, Henry V. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. hmm. By the way, both of them, not as good as Dixie beer, in my so, opinion. So, uh, I don't know if there's, there's no word about reformulating the actual brew, but uh, Faubourg beer. I just hate all of this weepy crawly you wouldn't even say this in the confessional and i know that mrs benson and tom were both devout catholics and probably went to confession every week yeah i mean it just it's so mealy mouth i'm gonna read it to you when my husband and i acquired the majority interest in dixie beer in 2016 we recognized that we were investing in more than a brewery we were investing in a strong and resilient community when the team embarked upon this journey in June, we understood that our new name must encompass the spirit and diversity of all New Orleans unique neighborhoods. The Faubourg Brewing Company is a celebration of our city, our people, and our commitment to New Orleans. Our investments in New Orleans will continue and bringing jobs and economic opportunity to our community will remain at the forefront. You want a little cheese to go with that wine? Well, that just it sounds like Mrs. Benson. It really does. It sounds like she wrote that herself. But well, here's the deal. <laughs> when you and your husband bought Dixie in 2016, you bought it to make money. Period. No, an simple. investment in our fine city and its culture. And you come in and say, I don't like your name. It hurts my feelings. First thing is I'm going to say, and you think I give a crap about that? That's the first thing I'm going to say. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to take you to my money room and watch me sit my big round butt on all my money. And then I'm going to say, what do you got? You don't like the name? We paid $9 million for this brewery. Go out to your car, get me $9 million, and you can have the brewery and you can make it anything you want. People have forgotten how to be rich in this country. You know what's interesting is in this story, 
Uh, they also mentioned that the word Faubourg, there is a well-known neighborhood adjacent to the French Quarter called mm -hmm. the Faubourg Marigny, M-A-R-I-G-N-Y, mm -hmm. the Faubourg Marigny. And they say, well, Faubourg, it's, it's, it's an old French term for neighborhood. It's like, do you know any French origin words that have burg in them anywhere? Cronenberg <laughs> uh, beer, the French beer. Is that beer. French? Is it French or is it Swiss? I think it's French. See, you, 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 you have to get up into the Alsace before you start, and you start getting those Swiss and German yeah, influences get, seeping into France. They get linguistically confused when, on the border with Belgium and Germany and Switzerland. But basically what Faubourg means is neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And, you know, New Orleans is a city that, you know, one of the great things about the city is you, if you drive through it, the neighborhoods are significantly different as you move across but town. Jeez, Gail. Miss Benson, I really like you. I really do. But, God, what is she, 71, 72 years old, something like that? I don't know her age. Grow is up. Relevant? Learn how to kick some nuts. I, I just, Play a little you show me yours and I'll show you mine. I think that... A few if, million of mine. If you're, if, if you're going to let someone tell you, change the name of your product because we don't like that word, you should make them say, all right. I want you to bring me your evidence that this word is racially insensitive given the history of this country. That this word, Dixie, that there's a problem with Dixie. But you know what? Nobody and if it's as weak as, well, you know, Dixie means New Orleans and uh, uh, there were slaves in New Orleans. It's like, well, then we need to tear down the French Quarter. Nobody. We need to turn the French Quarter into a gigantic parking lot. Nobody is running and jumping and wetting their pants because they're so upset over Fat Bastard Beer, which is a legitimate name that sells quite well. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, it's so insensitive. That's, it's offensive. To, to chubby people who don't know their father. Don't like it, don't buy it. Exactly. Clarence said, oh. don't like it, don't buy it. Clarence. And you know, Miss Brenson, I will stand with you. If you want to take your well-manicured hand and give the next one that says something like this, the middle finger, I will hold your purse. Now, Kevin's going to peer into the crystal ball here. <laughs> Faubourg beer. Let's look at the future of Faubourg beer. Faubourg beer will be in desperate, desperate shape within three years. No brand awareness like Dixie had. Right. It'll be in desperate shape within three years. The Benson family, or Ms. Benson, I think she holds controlling interest over everything. They have the majority. She will put the brewery up for sale. Somebody who is smart and we'll buy it, rename thinking, it Dixie. will buy it back and flip the name to Dixie Beer. Just like Benson's did, they brought the, ba the brand back. Someone else will have to uh, bring it back a second time. And you, we just need to stand up to these, yeah, these it, culture correctors, these social justice warriors well, sometimes. I mean, sometimes they're right. Sometimes they're so completely right on what they're asking for, but sometimes they are just insane. But you know, what, what standing does anybody have? It's a private business. They're not doing anything illegal. They're not putting harsh chemicals into their product. You know, they're, they're, they're paying their taxes. They're employing people, and they're withholding a proper amount of, from their... Uh, you know what? It's not about whether you think it might be offensive. It's not about that. It's none of your damn business until you buy a big, big chunk of that company. And then you can see how that plays no, out. No, see, but th 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 we're changing. Now it's like, you know, the unwashed and uneducated masses get to decide things. No, they don't. Uh, the nervous and the easily offended and the people that need safe spaces, they get to decide things. Well, you, you remember that... Uh, you remember that uh, person on our podcast who got all upset because I was being mean to people by asking them the source of their information and providing with facts. Remember that? Oh, yes. And do you remember how I handled it? Uh, pretty much told them where to get off. <laughs> Vociferously. And I made it painful. And see, that's the thing we don't do anymore. We don't make it painful to be stupid in this country. And you know what? If you're going to spend all of your money on something like this and somebody comes to you with a mealy mouth thing, you just sit there and say, no. Wait, no, I'm, I'm sorry, I misspoke. Hell no. None of your business. It's my candy store, not yours. Mm -hmm. You don't get to decide things like my brand. 
No. Bill, what has 2020 told us? My candy store. If we want in, we're coming in and we'll kill you to go in there and loot it and burn it. Because social justice. Well, and you know, I, I was actually reading some stats on the big, big demonstrations with lots of, uh, lots of looting and burning mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, in Minneapolis and in, uh, what was it, Kenosha, and then also... Uh, Portland, Portland, Seattle, an entire section of Seattle's downtown with taken the, over with the by trash. With the exception of Seattle, all, or not all, excuse me, a vast majority of the businesses that were locally owned, that these people trashed and burned, were owned by African Americans. Yep. Social justice bill. I mean, that's just absolutely freaking insane. The people that you would advocate are the victims of your behavior. Yeah. So there we have that. A brief break, and then we'll be, we'll be back on Exiles TV. I'm going to go find myself a nice cold Dixie before they change the label. Mm -hmm. We got any behind the bar over there? I don't know. We'll go check. Probably not. Bellello's Furniture and Appliances, your dependable independent. Depend on us for service, for selection, for price. Get huge Whirlpool savings. Shop now and save on Whirlpool appliances throughout the store. Plus, experience our price match guarantee and ask about special financing. You can depend on the know-how of people who live appliances every day. Bellello's Furniture and Appliances, your dependable independent with nationwide buying power. Hello guys, it's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. I've seen a lot of things during my life, more bad things than good. I've lived in a lot of places, but never a home. I don't think anybody cares about me anymore. And now, I'm tired. Signed, Brian, age 11. Abused and neglected children in East Baton Rouge Parish are in dire need of CASA volunteers. Please call 379-8598 today. Change a life of hurt into a life of hope. Hi, I'm Hurricane Betsy Barnes. And I'm Dr. Kay Siller with The Rocket Right Show. We are two busy blondes on the go showing off life in Louisiana. Watch us on Pelican Sports Network. And Talk 107.3 FM. Check local listings for times. I owed the IRS $10,000. The IRS garnished my wages. They put a lien on my house. I'm self-employed and didn't report all my income. They claim I owe a lot more than I do. The IRS is the most powerful collection agency in the world. They do not give up until you pay. I couldn't sleep. We were being audited. I called Tax Solutions Now and a great big weight was lifted off my shoulders. I called Tax Solutions Now and they got the IRS off my back. Tax Solutions Now had my my wage garnishment lifted in 48 hours. Tax Solutions Now can get you help. Our agents know the rules, can stop the pain, and get you the best deal. Tax Solutions Now saved my business. I qualified for the Fresh Start program. I paid less than I owed. We connect you with a team of former IRS agents and tax professionals who get the IRS off your back. Time is running out. Call Tax Solutions Now. Call 800-778-4345. 800-778-4345. You're back. Hey. How I was you? just about to go all Ferris Bueller. What? You still here? <laughs> it's not over though yet. It's well, not the, if over. we're still here, if we're still here at 1105 and Clarence isn't, then I'll come Clarence on. Clarence is going to be some kind of angry. Clarence is going to be right. Yeah, first of all, he's going to be right here. He's got things to do, people to talk to. He's going to be some kind of angry. Let's talk a little bit about gun crime in Baton Rouge. Yeah, because I'm trying to stay away from elections. Well, and, and 
again, irregularities with this year's presidential election. A big part of our local election for mayor president is going to have to be the crime issue in East Baton Rouge Parish. We are growing with gun crime. We are growing with murder by firearm. We are probably going to set a record this year. And I feel that the candidates have all tried to mention it with like, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna do something about it because it's horrible and then, but look, have you, have you seen the, the economic development plan? Pardon the pun, but they've been whistling past the graveyard. Yes, they have. Uh, <laughs> They've been peeing on my shoes and telling me it's raining. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing is, you don't have economic development with this kind of crime in your streets. Uh, have you ever known any of uh, the people that, that come in from companies to try to survey whether this would be a good place to relocate? Oh, yeah. They look at schools. That's a zero. Okay. They look at do you have litter all over your streets? Is your, is your Urban pride. Yeah, er, and they look at crime. I have a, a, an old friend that we actually, from kindergarten on until college time, you know, we're friends, we played in bands together, and he is one of these corporate relocation um, experts for Midas, and Midas does more than just muffler shops. They do other types of businesses under their corporate umbrella. And he came through Baton Rouge, and we went out and had a drink, and he's like, can't do it. He said, I can't, I can't recommend Baton Rouge for a new location. And he said, we can get past the fact that you really don't keep your city very clean. We can get past the fact that your schools are bad. We don't have that many employees that would be coming to this office that still have school-age kids. Or we pay our employees enough where they can send their kids to yeah. a private school. But he said, your crime is totally off the charts. And he said, it makes no sense. It's not a spike. We, it's, it's not a spike where something we can say, all right, that's just an aberration. It is a wave. It continues to grow and continues to grow and continues to grow. He said, I just can't do it. So all the mayoral candidates, Kevin, that are talking about economic development, I want economic development. But you know what? You don't get it until you stop having kids left in cars with guns and people getting shot down on the street and people having running gunfights on the interstate and people getting killed. What is four in apartment complexes in the last five days? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what's to be done about it? You know, I mean, the only, the only thing that can be done about it is pay your police like their lives depend on it mm -hmm. and your lives depend on it. And let's slip the dogs of war. I'm not saying let police get away with atrocities, but no. you've got to let them do their damned jobs. And you can't come after them after they've done their job and maybe somebody got hurt because, you know, they, they, were, they were trying their best. You, first, you have to give police, in my opinion, you've got to give police the benefit of the doubt. You've got to tell yourself that cops don't show up, don't get up in the morning and go, maybe today's the day I'll get to shoot a guy. Because that's just not the way it is. That's just not. Well, and that's not common. And you've got to leave them, the, you've got to give them the strength and the leeway to do their jobs. And if you let them do their jobs, and then you let the prosecutor do his job, yes, the jails are going to fill up. But over a matter of time, what's going to happen? This becomes, a, this becomes a city where it's like, hey, they're tough on crime. You're not going to get away with it. You're going to get caught. You're going to get sent to jail. And well, word gets around. And a lot of these are just, well, these crimes are being committed by just kids that are still impressionable. I, I think the big problem, and I, I want our police to police in a very, very demonstrative, proactive way. Uh, one of the things that really Rudy Giuliani was right, and it was ju wasn't just him, but also it was a criminologist from Boston who said, look around, you've got broken windows, you've got Pardon. trash, you've got an escalation of crime. 
And so you go in there and you arrest people and you make sure you send every car available that's not going to leave something uncovered and they got their lights and their sirens so that everybody sees that you're handcuffing little Johnny for spray painting a wall. And eventually people are going to get the idea like, man, you can't even spit on the sidewalk here without getting taken downtown. And it worked in New York for a lot of years. They did a lot of stop and frisks. They, they did a lot of, you know, the, the vans, the, the Ford Econoline vans that would hold 15 people. They would just roll up on a street corner and you would see 15 cops getting out of one van. I guarantee you, if you were a kid that was thinking about maybe trying to snatch and grab from a store or trying to jack a car on that corner, you ran like hell and you told all your friends. But we have in Baton Rouge and in New Orleans and probably in Lafayette and in Shreveport, we have politically elected people that don't want us enforcing minor crimes. They don't want it at all. And that leads to a license to major crime. You have got to get out there and you have got to crack down. HB. We got HB? HB. Uh, I, I hit the button that says speaker, right? Nope, Dude, just hit no. this one. All right, hit it. HB, how are you? Good morning. What's on your mind, sir? Uh, Mr. Bill was correct about the other topic y'all was talking about. You need to start at the beginning. When the officers make the arrest, find out, they need to find out what they've been arrested for, the, the charges on them, and then find out how many charges the DA reduces when they go to court and just slap them on the hand for a lot lesser charge and that they're back out on the street. If there's no complications or for, for them on the lower end of the scale, they're going to commit the higher end. Good Thank point. You. Wait, HB, before you go, as a former cop, is it routine to run the weapon in an accidental shooting that was supposedly left by a friend to make sure that it's not stolen? I can only tell you what I would do after with my experience. What? I would take that weapon and run an ATF check complete background on it. Would it make any difference if the weapon were a handgun or a long rifle? It doesn't make any difference. Okay. You want to know the complete history of that weapon, ATF should have it. Thank you, sir. Appreciate your service. Thanks for calling, HB. Yes, sir. Yep. And, and he's right. Now, there's, you mentioned one thing that I, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sort of disagree with. One of the things I don't like about some of the policies that have worked in cleaning up cities, stop and frisk probably harassed a lot of completely innocent people. It probably did. You know, and a lot of driving while black you can't, complaints. You when they can't do that. assume that just because somebody's in the hood and they can't dress in nice clothes that they are in fact a criminal. That's true. Whether the hood, the barrio, the Irish neighborhood, whatever, somebody that's a, a ragamuffin or doesn't or looks like a shady person. I mean, I look like a shady person. Well, not today. Well, not today. But you know, look, I could look as crooked as they come, and I could give you that in about five minutes. Okay, um, so. I, I, I'm going to disagree with a stop and frisk policy. You shouldn't just harass people just because they're standing around. Um, but if, if the police have any reason to believe that, hey, there's some guys over there standing around, but six blocks down the street, somebody said, yeah, I saw what happened. The guy was wearing red shorts, and chances are you'll find him over there with those guys that are hanging around. Well, and, you know, you also used to have kind of like flashcards of bad actors you know and, and if you see somebody who is known to associate with people who fire guns or commit crimes maybe he's been arrested but you couldn't make it stick then perhaps a little talk from the car with them to let them know that you see them and let you let them know that you're you're there and I agree with you Kevin there will be people who get harassed when you have really really high-end proactive policing mm -hmm. I get that. And I guess it's up to everyone to decide whether or not that's acceptable or not acceptable. Um, the thing is that the mayor, and I, I'm not going to do a big campaign thing against the mayor, but the mayor did run on, I'm going to replace the police chief that everybody in the community is so mad at right now. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and this is a police chief who, as you mentioned on the show earlier this week, had brought crime numbers or had had a part in bringing the crime numbers down considerably in East Baton Rouge Parish. But because of the incident that we spoke of earlier this hour, um, he had to go. Um, because under his watch, there were apparently still some cops that... Nobody wants a cop that's going to cuss you out, call you names, do terrible things. But when guns are involved, I'm, I'm sorry, I do recognize using harsh language and feigned or, uh, or real anger, rage, as a way to maybe get someone to understand I'm serious. Back down. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Well, that's it. I mean, that, it's and we've had FBI agents tell us that, that a little use of rough language and feigned rage and is effective as a way to diffuse the situation. And maybe you don't have to shoot. You know, I swear to God, I will blow your head off. Mm -hmm. you maybe know, you don't have to shoot. You know, and, and that's what we all want, isn't it? Uh, we'll be back in a moment to wrap it up for you. Stick around for more Exiles TV. Thanks. I got 12 little friends. Hi, I am Dr. Farrell Frugier, Jr., and I am a general dentist at Frugier Family Dentistry. I was born and raised in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I went to Catholic High School, LSU, and LSU School of Dentistry in New Orleans, where I received my DDS degree in 1986. I always have and will continue to be committed to continuing my education, to invest in technology, which makes the diagnosis and delivery of dentistry more thorough, more comfortable, and more aesthetically pleasing. In our practice, we are here to serve the patients. We want to improve their quality of life and to develop relationships with our patients. In dentistry, we have a chance to impact lives on a daily basis, not just by doing dentistry, but by getting to know them and being a part of their life. We also believe in giving back to our community. So every year, we give back to the Greater Baton Rouge Food Bank, Toys for Tots, and Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center. Please stop by and visit our office. We would love to take care of you and your family. From appetizers, pasta dishes, and entrees, La Contea takes pride in preparing all the Italian cuisine we know you love. Enjoy live music every Thursday through Saturday from 6 to 9, happy hour weekdays from 3 to 6, and brunch on Sundays from 11 to 2, as well as dinner portion-sized lunch specials for under $10. Visit our website to view our menu and book a party or meeting in our large banquet room. Once you try La Contea, your Italian dining will change forever. now, choose any new 20 Mazda and get 0% for 60 months, plus 90 days deferred payments during the Team Mazda Upgrade event happening now at Team Mazda on Airline. Hi, business owners. Phase three. Woohoo! But do your customers know you're back? Well, that's where the Clarence Bug Show and Pelican Broadcasting can help. Right now, we've got great rates on advertising packages to help you get the word out. Shoot me an email at bugsclarence at gmail.com. Or better yet, call me up. I'd love to talk with you. 225-485-6839. Let's get together and make Phase 3 the best it can possibly be. Here we are back again for Exiles TV. We thank you so much for spending some time with us this Thursday morning. Uh, there's just so much going on in the news, and Bill and I thought for today, I can't guarantee we won't be back on it tomorrow, but for today we're not going to talk about what's going on with the presidential election. There's a lot going on, and I'm sorry, we're just, Clarence may get into it next hour, so, but we're just going to, I'm just going to take I, a break. I'm going to give my blood pressure a break, is what I'm going yeah. to do. Uh, my doctor said, "What well, you want me to double your dose? Don't worry about it. I seriously t thought about taking two in the morning instead of the one that I'm prescribed. 
Um, I will say this, I do worry if things that are alleged or questioned aren't looked into um, that we're seeing the beginning of the end of our, our election process as a country. Well, here's the thing, there is so much focus on this that if there is a serious allegation that has a one scintilla of proof that you, you are absolutely insane and you forfeit the rest of your position whether you're a prosecutor or an investigator or whatever, if you don't, in fact, investigate. Yeah, you, there's and, some things you have to look into. You know, it, it's like that thing we heard yesterday that turned out to be totally false. The uh, 170,000 ballots, the ballots that were all filled out for Donald Trump, no... There was no truth to it no whatsoever? No truth to it at all. And again, think about it. Who would be that stupid if you're trying to... If you're trying to mess with an election, you're going to put some Republican exactly. things. Exactly, you're going to do a big ballot yeah. drop. You no, nobody's got to make stupid. it look believable. Put some Trump votes in there. But the people who forward this think that everybody's stupid and they're going to believe it. You well, know? Uh, it is important to get your news from a, a more reliable source than Facebook. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to recommend Newsmax to people that want it. Um, if you miss the fair and balance of Fox, mm -hmm. because Fox is no longer fair. Their, their idea of being fair and balanced is that they let Tucker Carlson continue to have a job. Um, and Sean Hannity. And, and that's because they just can't argue with the ratings and the money those two guys are bringing in. Well, at, hey, any, at any rate. Before we go, we want to do an RIP for Elsa Raven. Elsa Raven was a Hollywood fixture for many, many years. She had an acting career that spanned movies like Titanic, TV shows like Wise Guy, Amen, um, Seinfeld, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. She was one of those character actresses that appeared as a lot of different things. You may remember Elsa Raven as the Save the Clock Tower lady from Back to the Future. I do remember her. But uh, Elsa, she was, by the way, very active in uh, politics as well. She passed away Monday at 91 years 91, well, she God had a good long her. run. In the meantime, we will be back next time. Be safe, be well. God bless. We'll see you soon on Exiles TV.